Hello, hello, more Dimers here and welcome back to Over the Board Tournament Altibox Norway Chess uh, 2020 and breaking news for those who don't like the spoilers, uh, just move forward the video to the beginning of the game and for those who um, don't really care, Magnus Carlsen uh, cannot continue his not losing streak. 125 uh, games in the classical time format, he haven't lost even a single game, but then uh, he lost to Jan Krzysztof Duda. Uh, so that's the spoiler. And uh, without further ado, let's see how that happened. Uh, Magnus Carlsen gonna play as black and Jan Krzysztof Duda open with e4. Now, uh, Magnus went for the Karo Khan because Jan Krzysztof Duda actually said that Ali Reza Firuzia uh, couldn't play Karo Khan, so he didn't prepare against him. Um, you know, his coach told him to prepare, uh, but he didn't listen to him. Uh, that's what we know from the interview. So Magnus Carlsen thought, okay, if he's not prepared for the Karo Khan very well, let's go for something sharp. Uh, we have d4, d5, um, knight c3, d takes on e4, knight takes on e4, and Ali Reza Firuzia went for bishop f5. However, here we have knight f6 and now uh, we have knight f6 and how to take um, this knight? Actually, if you think G takes on F6 or E takes on F6, both of the answers are correct. And we have about 2000 games played uh, for each variation. Uh, for your information, G takes on F6 would be the Bronstein Larsen variation. So it definitely has to be good as, um, you know, David Bronstein and Bent Larsen were uh, really strong players. Magnus went for E takes on F6, more classical approach, uh, and it's called Tartakover variation. We have c3 now uh, supporting the d4 pawn uh, and bishop d6. Still the theory, bishop d3 uh, and now we have castle. We have queen c2 now uh, attacking the pawn on h7 and now rook e8 with check. And this knight would love to go to f3. However, it's forced actually to, to be developed to e2. Uh, and over there the, the knight can be uh, pretty much set, uh, but we will see in the game. h5 avoiding to to losing the, the, the pawn and now we have bishop e3. So this bishop also works uh, for the moment as a pawn. We have knight d7 and here Jan Krzysztof Duda decided to go for the main line. The sharpest line actually is the is the castle on the queen side. And now by the statistics, only 35 games ended with the draws. OK, uh, the white and the black has the same uh, statistics for winning. So that means that the, the variation is a very, very sharp. Uh, and uh, knight f8 is the main line here. And um, it's 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 pretty much, you know, very solid way of playing that knight f8 uh, and after king b1 play something like bishop e6 and start to concentrate and uh, maybe the forces on the on the queen side a c4 could be played here uh, rook c8 and and knight c3 this is the main line main ideas so this definitely could be played, but Magnus Carlsen go for the kill. He want to win against Jan Krzysztof Duda, who struggled in this tournament. He didn't win even a single game um, in the in the classical time format. So we have b5 uh, and now d5. We have only one game in the database. Uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda follows this, the same move, d5 and now c5 and bishop b5 winning that pawn. But at at the same time opening the b file which can be very very dangerous we have rook b8 uh, with uh, attack on the on the bishop uh, c4 defending and now a6 kicking the bishop bishop a4 and now it took actually 30 minutes for magnus carlsen to find another move to find the plan for his game uh, in the only game in the database we have actually rook e5 however we have rook e7 so it's quite a novelty the idea is to actually double the rooks on the on the b file uh, and here also Jan Krzysztof Duda thought for a while uh, how to continue and he found the plan which makes him very 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 happy uh, it was not the best continuation in the game however uh, it makes him happy so knight g3 was played uh, now with the attack on the pawn, but also uh, with some, you know, ideas of bringing the knight to the to the f5 square or e4 square. 
we have knight e5 taking under control f5 square so the, the rook and the bishop cannot be attacked and uh, Magnus Carlsen doesn't care about this pawn on h5 because after queen b6 uh, he also can play with the bishop to, to g4 attacking the, the knight attacking the rook uh, and so on and it's a pretty good continuation for him so he just doesn't much uh, care so knight d5 and uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda said in the interview that actually uh, he was very happy about this maneuver bringing the knight from the very very passive uh, e2 square um, to e4 so he was uh, he was very content about that uh, however in this position he could play bishop d2 bishop d2 taking under control these two squares first the queen couldn't go um, to a5 that is the one thing uh, and b4 is even more important and you will see in the game uh, why uh, probably Jan Krzysztof Duda was worrying about something like h4 but after knight e4 uh, and h3 this was what he was he was worried about uh, he could probably play something like f4 and after h takes on g2, rook h to g1, let's say knight g6, uh, rook g2 and everything is uh, totally fine here. So uh, white also has this open file as, as a counterplay. So so this was definitely uh, very much possible. However, Jan Krzysztof Duda decided knight e4 is, is much better in this position and Magnus also uh, continue his plan. So rook e to b7 uh, and now uh, of course the, the rooks can uh, exchange for the, for the queen and then the knight can jump with the check with the exchange on the on the bishop then the queen can join the game as well in some variation uh, with check and winning the bishop so definitely uh, Blackwood stands very good so this is why we have b3 now defending c4 and now rook b4 so this is what I was talking about this bishop stays on d2 uh, protects actually b4 and a5 pretty important move um, we have bishop d2 now but now it's too late rook a4 sacrificing uh, the exchange we have b takes on a4 and Jan Krzysztof Duda actually said in the interview that uh, he knows that Magnus has some some compensation for that however he was very happy in this position uh, as this is nothing uh, much serious we have bishop f5 now pinning this knight so Jan Krzysztof Duda was so proud of um, improving the position of the uh, of the knight however the knight now is you know uh, pinned we have rook d to e1 defending them the knight over protecting uh, and probably here magnus should go for something like knight g4 knight g4 and let's say f3 and um, and yeah after bishop e4 f takes on e4 bishop e5 this bishop could do really well on this diagonal with the plan with the rook on on b2 that could be a plan so bishop c3 probably uh, and after bishop d4 believe me or not i checked this with the engine that taking this bishop isn't the greatest idea because uh, black has a better position even white has these two connected past pawns it's still better for black but this is you know uh beyond my imagination i try to find you know uh, why is that and i will explain you in a couple of moves uh, what is the difference however for now if white would take it actually that would be better for black uh, okay Magnus went for h4 so he want to continue h3 and here uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda also said in the interview that a uh, couple of moves were random because in the move 21 uh, he was already in the time trouble so he had to to get to this position uh, he spent quite a lot of time um, Jan Krzysztof Duda went for h3 however rook e3 would be much stronger now look at this this rook on the third rank would be very very powerful controlling h3 uh, can also come for example to b3 to counter the rook and so on so definitely a very good idea Jan Krzysztof Duda went for h3 so he didn't want Magnus to play that and now we have knight g6 with the idea of bringing the, the knight to the more active square we have rook e3 now uh, and now knight f4 as planned uh, with the idea of course of picking up the pawn on g2 uh, we have g4 Jan Krzysztof Duda is not interested and here if Magnus actually takes the pawn it was 
playable, are uh, probably not the best. Um, F takes on g3, knight h5, and now g4 is not the problem, uh, because actually black would very easily uh, equalize after g4. Uh, bishop takes on e4 with the attack on the on the rook, and then winning back the exchange. So that was that was possible, and black would uh, do pretty much well. Uh, but white has a much better continuation. Actually, rook g1 and uh, white really stands really, really great. Bishop e5 now is, is still the best move in the position. But after bishop c3, bishop d4 now exchanging the bishops is in favor of white. So slightly different. Uh, the, the, the rook is not on e1, but on b3. And this, you know, evaluation is completely opposite. Now white would stand better. So this is why Magnus didn't. Um, didn't take it and Passau played bishop g6 and now we have king d1 <laughs> and you could ask why to move the, the king to the center actually if black managed to, to bring the heavy pieces to b1 uh, then this bishop always can come to c1 and defend the king so um, that would be the idea now Magnus could go for his uh, natural plan here bishop e5 uh, and let's say after rook b3 avoid the trade of the of the rooks also take under control the, the, the c5 let's say f3 queen d7 going after this pawn uh, and after bishop c3 uh, Magnus could have very interesting move knight e6 uh, with the idea of jumping uh, with the knight to very nice outpost on d4 very very strong outpost uh, also that would be very nice threat uh, of, of winning the, the exchange uh, but probably this knight would be worth much more than the, than the rook. Uh, however we have f5 so what Magnus want to achieve make a space for the queen. Now uh, the queen cannot go to f6 but maybe in the future if the queen could get there uh, then could get to a1 and get the you know uh, continue the attack. Uh, we have knight d6 now as the knight is under attack so knight d6 uh, and queen d6 six we have g takes on f5 uh, and now bishop h5 with check uh, f3 and queen f6 so magnus just you know follow his idea of bringing the queen to a1 uh, and here, believe me or not, but queen e4 is the strongest move in the position. In this exact position, queen e4 is really strong. The idea is uh, to let uh, Magnus play queen a1 and then bishop c1 and after rook b1, simply king d2, actually defending the, the bishop. And yes, black can pick up the, the, the pawn, uh, but then, you know, queen c2, queen a1, and now bishop b2 actually winning the exchange because the the queen is um, under attack so queen b2 now rook b1 and uh, after queen d4 let's say rook d3 very important move and after exchanging white actually stands really great this pawn uh, gonna win the game and black cannot do much about that so uh Queen e4 was a definitely very strong move. However, we have bishop c3, very natural, countering the queen uh, and moving the, the bishop on this uh, diagonal. We have queen g5 now with the idea uh, to bring the queen to g2. And now, uh, only now, uh, we have queen e4. But you will not believe me what was the idea of, of Jan Krzysztof Duda. Uh, actually, first I will show you the strongest continuation. He could play rook h2 e1. Uh, and the point is knight g2 is, is not uh, too much scary because uh, white, of course, can exchange even more material. Uh, and after rook e8, king h7, there is f6 move. Very strong move. Uh, bishop g6 blocking, however, queen d2 forcing to exchange the queens. If the queen moves somewhere, then, of course, we're going to have f takes on g7 with some mating ideas. The pawn cannot be taken. So, um, as you see, that would be uh, force the, the exchange. And after king d2, g takes on f6 d6 actually wins the game because this bishop can uh, can be exchanged for the pawn uh, on d7 after the rook come to, to e7 of course uh, has also the, the time to pick up the pawn on h3 however it's not enough because also uh, this bishop gonna win this pawn and the bishop gonna actually control um, this diagonal and white gonna gonna win the game the rook can actually uh, just pick up all these pawns and uh, and win the game so, uh...
This was possible, however, Jan Krzysztof Duda goes for queen e4 now. But you will not believe me why. His idea was, uh, he actually calculated that Magnus gonna go for queen g2. So he calculated queen g2 and after that he would like to take the, the knight. Uh, can you believe that? Because if Magnus go for queen g2 and uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda actually pick up the pawn, I hope you see that already, there is the checkmate in one, so that would not be even possible. But in the interview, uh, he said that he, this was his calculation. Luckily for him, in the last moment, uh, he figured out that's gonna be the checkmate in one. Now, how to play as Magnus Carlsen? This is extremely uh, difficult decision to make. Magnus Carlsen, the best move in the position is King H7, just to avoid any checks on the 8th rank. Uh, that is the idea. Uh, the problem is, could be, for example, Bishop E5 winning the material, uh, and it's a very complicated uh, engine line. So uh, I understand why Magnus Carlsen couldn't find it. And the only drawing move for Magnus Carlsen, he has had actually forced draw, uh, he would have to find the only move in the position knight d5. And the point is that after c takes on d5, rook b4, attacking the queen, uh, there is also the idea of winning back the material, uh, and also uh, if the queen uh, moves somewhere far, the queen can, can pick up this rook. So all of these ideas, so queen d3, keeping an eye on uh, on b1 and also on the rook, uh, but then c4, queen e4, and now rook b1. Uh, and after queen b1, rook e3, the problem is now the bishop can come on f3 with check, winning the rook, so king c2, uh, and after bishop f3, Queen e1, let's say there are a couple of lines, but this is actually the best move in the position and it's still drawing. Queen d3 uh, and after king b2, bishop h1 and if the bishop is taken, uh, then queen e2 wins uh, back the material and, uh, and yeah, that would be a draw. So very, very complicated game uh, line. And, uh, and there are a couple of other lines here. King h7 was the was the key move. However, we have queen g2. Luckily for Jan Krzysztof Duda, he figured out that he cannot take the, the, the knight. Uh, he played rook h1 now uh, as the knight cannot jump to d2. Uh, and here, Magnus Carlsen should try f6. It's defensive move, but very important moves, taking under control um, the e8 square. And, and it's not like, you know, uh, equalizing move. He still has the problems, but at least Jan Krzysztof Duda uh, couldn't have, you know, a so good counterplay uh, as he had. So what he could play, for example, d6, uh, the strongest move in the position, and after queen a2, d7. So you would ask, okay, hello, but this is um, the checkmate or something actually not queen b1 queen b1 king d2 and now how to stop this pawn it's impossible you cannot uh, for example if you want to deliver um some perpetual check is not possible this knight doing a really great job here okay so so yes that that's correct however after king c1 you can deliver a couple of checks here but at the end the bishop can actually you know stop all the checks and white gonna win the game so uh uh, it would not work. Queen b8, of course, is also losing simply because uh, rook e8 with check. And um, that, of course, is also uh, winning for white. So uh, rook b1 simply would not work. What black could try uh, is now winning the exchange, okay? Winning the exchange this way. And after queen c2, just win. And uh, rook e3, let's say queen c4, but there is still the problem, rook d3, and this pawn gonna advance and win the game. So, uh, you know, even you block this, you always have bishop a5 uh, with, the, with the attack on the dark square of the promotion square. Bishop f3 can be played, try to exchange this bishop for two pawns, uh, but white simply can go to, to, to c1, uh, then queen f4, king b2, and there is no way for, for, for black actually to save that game. So uh, f6 was important, but it was still not enough. Uh, so Magnus Carlsen decided to gamble here and he played queen a2. 
we have queen c2 so so queen maneuver uh, on the e4 wasn't that great uh, as Jan Krzysztof Duda said in the interview we have queen c4 now winning this pawn and here you can actually pause the video and find the winning continuation uh, for uh, white there is only one you know forced win continuation and one which is you know you would still have to grind for the win while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so if you find bishop e5 with the attack on the queen and also on the knight and the rook yes it's winning however it's not the winning you know in clear way queen d5 uh with check comes with the check king c1 and now rook b4 can actually defend the knight so uh white of course has the winning position but still you know need a lot um to to win that Rook e8 was winning uh, immediately and this is what Jan Krzysztof Duda played and now the point is if Magnus Carlsen decide to exchange the rooks that would be losing pretty much fast because after king h7 then is rook h8 this is the move you you had to find if you found it then congratulations this is really strong move because king h8 bishop g7 with the discover attack on the queen okay and white is winning queen against two pieces uh, is of course winning so Magnus decided to play king h7, give up the rook, so uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda is already a full rook and also exchange up. Uh, we have queen d5, so plan for Magnus now is to uh, pick up all the pawns, uh, look at these pawns, are, are pretty much weak, um, and try to, you know, uh, equalize, maybe uh, make some counterplay with the, with the pawns. Uh, we have queen d2 and now bishop f3 with check, king c1, queen f5, win yet another pawn uh, and now rook e3 as the knight for example could come to d3 uh, and maybe win the exchange but that's not the worst um, what could happen because now magnus went for knight e2 setting up very nice trap um, as jan krzysztof duda has a uh, time troubles and this is the move 37 uh, then he has to calculate you know pretty much uh, precisely uh, if he takes a rook on e2 this actually would be the best move in the position the problem is he cannot take this bishop uh, he has to go some for something like queen d8 which is not easy to actually find but you know um, the pawn would be under attack there are also some some ideas uh, of attacking the pawn from behind uh, he cannot take the bishop because that actually would give Magnus some nice counter chances with the you know winning this this rook uh, let's say king c2 and Magnus would have three pawns uh, for the bishop which is of course winning for for Jan Krzysztof Duda but you know it's still a lot to play um, in this position uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda didn't fall for that trap he played king b2 uh, and now uh, this knight has to do something if the knight is moved then white would get the, all the initiative this is why we have knight c3 queen c3 and now queen f4 going after rook and here a young Krzysztof Duda could exchange that rook for the bishop but he decided uh, queen d3 with check f5 and now save the rook uh, with the move with the attack on the on the f5 pawn uh, we have queen b4 with check now king c1 and now bishop e4 defending the, the pawn and also creating a trap setting up very nice trap if for example Jan Krzysztof Duda would like to exchange the queens this way that would be disaster this is another trap and check um, and checkmate so uh, Magnus Carlsen just simply saying if you want to win for the first time against the world champion in classical time format at least what you have to do you know avoid in the winning position avoid all the traps uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda uh, didn't fall to, uh, into that trap of course we have queen b3 uh, and now queen d4 uh, we have queen c3 still forcing to exchange the queens queen d6 and now rook f7 so Jan Krzysztof Duda also wants to be as active as possible and create his own threats we have queen g6 now the rook is under attack so rook d7 uh, and now queen g1 we have king b2 and now c4 taking under control b3 so for example if this pawn can move uh, and take under control this pawn then 
probably Magnus Carlsen would have a very nice attack with the with the queen b1 uh, maybe not the mating ideas here because the queen is still controlling all the squares but it already starts to look like you know uh, pretty dangerous and against the world champion are uh, better just to play something safe like rook e4 we have f takes on e4 and now rook d4 so going after both of these pawns uh, we have queen f2 with check uh, queen d2 blocking and and now c3 with check and um, king c3 queen g3 so uh want to win the pawn on h3 and create the passed pawn so as you see magnus carlsen uh, is a very very dangerous uh, to the end of course the rook cannot go um to d3 because the pawn controls d3 square so we have king b2 and now queen h3 as planned rook e4 so also winning the pawn and now queen g3 making a space uh, for the passed pawn uh, we have queen d4 now going after the pawn and now uh, queen g3 with check uh, king c3 queen f3 uh, improving the position of the queen king before delivering one more check uh, king a5 and now queen f5 with check king a6 and now g5 so two connected past pawn still could be potentially uh, pretty much dangerous but Jan Krzysztof Duda also create the past pawn on his own so a5 we have h3 uh, and now rook e7 with check king g6 queen g7 king h5 queen h7 king g4 and now you can pause the video and find the move uh, after which Magnus Carlsen will resign uh, while I enjoy my cup of tea. Uh, so if you think okay queen f5 is winning you are right this is winning but it's not the move uh, which you know uh, would cause Magnus Carlsen to resign uh, the winning move is rook e4 boom and now nothing can be done there is a check uh, if the king is moved then of course the queen gonna be lost for free and if the rook is taken then the queen can take uh, on e4 and of course queen can defend uh, and this this pawn gonna promote and win the game uh, so this is why Magnus Carlsen resigned but if you think queen f5 is so easy to win as well it's not really easy because after king b7 g4 uh, a6 g3 these pawns are are extremely fast as well so a um, a7 h2 rook has to go to e1 and then we have g2 so as you see it's a it's a pretty tricky it's still winning for white uh, because after promotion uh, whichever pawn you're gonna promote you're gonna lose so for example um, g pawn promotes then we're gonna have queen f8 with check uh, and after rook g1 of course uh, uh, white gonna win that queen so uh, that's not possible and h1 is is slightly better but it's still losing uh, but white needs to uh, put a little bit more, more effort so queen f8 king g4 uh, queen g7 king f3 and after uh, queen f6 king g3 queen g5 uh king h3 otherwise that would be the, the checkmate uh, but then the rook can join the game and uh, after this moves this would be a checkmate as well so uh so yeah a rook e4 is the last move in the position queen uh, f5 was also winning but as you see uh, 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 pretty much very tricky and so congratulations to Jan Krzysztof Duda for his first historical win over Magnus Carlsen in the classical time control and uh, for ending his incredible streak uh, the best streak not losing streak in the chess history 125 games without losing wow that's just incredible if you like this game press like if you don't like it for some reason press and like and if you want to see more games on my channel press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one